Are you chaotic or neat? Jesus says, My dear children, with the following recollections to the two volumes, Spiritual Sun, I want to give you a very important and useful rule today, without which you won't benefit at all from reading any kind of spiritual book. You might read the Holy Scripture or also this new word a thousand consecutive times, but still, without this rule, you will find yourself on the same spot again and again. You have jam-packed your mind with the many times you've been reading it. However, ask your spirit what he has gained from it, and his blunt answer will be. I am chaotically surrounded by all sorts of building material. There are beams and rocks which lie around like a mountain on top of each other. But out of all this building material, there has not even been built some kind of bad hovel in which I could live. You constantly heap up building material. Nothing but gemstones and the most beautiful cedar wood lies in crude piles in front of me. But I am unable to put it in order. When I have once in a while started to organize, somehow, you already add another load of new material so that I, inevitably, must get tired with my doings. And at the end, I will shudder at the sight of all the material that will have to be put in order, and I think with melancholy. When will I be able to arrange all this material into a dwelling? Look, this is a very clear answer of the spirit, which every human who has read a lot must find within himself very clearly. When someone has read a few thousand books during his lifetime, what a mess does he have in his mind at the end? And if it goes well, he will realize with great distress, after all that substantial reading, that he knows nothing. But what does this confession mean? It's nothing else but the same melancholic lamentation of the spirit who wants to tell you that even with all this building material, he was not able to build even something bad like a hovel to live in. So, there are people who have memorized every single word of the Old and New Testament, but ask them about the deeper meaning of only one verse and they'll know as much as someone who does not memorize one single verse, or maybe does not even know that something like the Holy Scripture exists. What then does all of this glorious building material profit them? The spirit only lives in the spiritual. If one cannot even build something as bad as a hovel out of that material for him, the spirit, in the inner spirit of truth, where is he supposed to live? To his household. And from where is he supposed to start organizing all the material? Isn't it better to possess less material, but then to immediately build a small, respectable dwelling for the spirit with this material? so that he gets a solid and free space for where he can make his next plans. And when new material arrives, he can use it according to those plans? What will a field look like if it has the best soil, but then you are sowing thousands of seeds at the same time in a chaotic way? The seeds will sprout and grow, but what does it profit the sower? Indeed, the harvest of that field will hardly be suitable for a bad feeding of the cattle. The stronger plants will choke the weaker ones, the wheat will grow rampant, and the wheat grain will only show up in a few places, little and withered.
From this we can learn that everything that's supposed to benefit you needs to be managed and organized. Because without, you are mixing up thorns, thistles, cabbage and turnips from which you have no benefit at all. But wherein consists this order? If you have a refined wheat, sow it on a pure and good field and you will get a pure and good harvest. Whoever has a building site and material for it shall not wait to begin building a dwelling until he has a redundant amount of building material. And only then he wants to start building his house, because at the end he will fill up his whole building site with that building material. And then, when the builder comes and asks him, Friend, where do you want your house to be built? What will he answer him? Probably nothing else then. Over there, my friend, where the big pile of building material lies. And the builder will say to him, Why did you let all this material pile up before we planned and dug out the base? If you want your house on this spot, you have to move aside all of this material first and completely free this place. Only then I will come and measure it out, design a plan and afterwards dig up the base and then check the material at the end, if it is indeed suitable to build your house. Look. Out of this parable, you can clearly recognize how useless a big literacy is for someone, if he does not move forward with such in the true order. Wherein lies the true order? This true order simply consists therein that everybody who gets a new load of material should organize it into a dwelling immediately and not grasp after a second load until the first one has been processed, digested. In this way, he will quickly advance with his construction and will always have enough free space in which he can stack up a new load of material in good order. This simply means that everybody, after reading, should quickly act upon and implement the newly learned things into his life. In this way, the red things will benefit him. However, the opposite will be harmful, because no one should only be a listener of the word, but also a doer. Further recollection soon.